Carl, I gotta say, solid work on that title. The pun. Um, when I wrote this article a couple of years ago, I spent about 10 minutes workshopping that thinking, there's gotta be a way. There's gotta be a way to get murder in it, and I did, and I'm very proud of that fact. If you ever watched a nature documentary, you probably know that animals are dicks. However, did you know there is a way to stop them being dicks to one another without hurting them or harming them in any way? <laughs> Experts do this using a concept known as conditioned taste aversion, often shortened to CTA by scientists without any time to lose. Using CTA, it's actually possible to make animals act against their most basic instincts without hurting them or even threatening them with a cartoonishly large butterfly net and motioning towards a nearby restaurant. So what is conditioned taste aversion? Well, basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's where you condition animals to avoid things based on its taste. And you can do this by taking a food the animal would ordinarily eat or you don't want it to eat anymore and just making it taste awful either with chemicals or like pepper or something like that. So basically how they learn in real life? Basically, yeah. But you're obviously, you're artificially recreating the uh, situation that are teaching to ordinarily avoid toxic um, things in real life. A really good example is chili peppers, because in the wild they're mostly eaten by birds because birds don't have a sense of taste. So they can just eat the seeds as much as they want, whereas any other animal that tries eating them is obviously going to avoid them because it burns their mouth. Unless obviously you like humans and you enjoy that for some reason. <laughs> Zoinks! Them peppers is like hot! Think of it, it's the way that most people who work in offices stop their co-workers eating their shit. So if you ever, like, people know it's one of the most annoying things in the world is when you have a co-worker who just eats your food. Food thieves are the worst people ever. And you'll always hear, how do I stop the guy doing this? It's either one, lace it with laxatives, or two, lace it with hot sauce. Because just like an animal, they will fucking learn if they keep trying to eat other people's food and it always gives them the shits or burns their mouth. <laughs> So perhaps the greatest example of CTA in action happened in 1983 when a worker at a bird sanctuary noticed that the eggs of some of their smallest, fuzziest and most endangered creatures were being predated on by a murder of local crows. It's a murder, honey. A group of crows is called a murder. So what did they do to stop the crows? What they did is they just took chicken eggs and painted them to look exactly like the eggs of those endangered birds and then coated them in a chemical that they hoped would stop the crows eating them. Hang on, didn't you just say that birds can't taste anything? Birds don't have a sense of taste. Oh, I did, didn't I? Um, I should explain. The chemical didn't taste bad, although it probably did, but the birds couldn't taste it. What it did was it made them violently ill. And as we all know, you don't need to be able to taste something for it to make you ill and throw up. Because um, we've all eaten dominoes. Shots fired. I repeat, shots fired. So after painting the eggs to look like those of an endangered species, it's noted by bird sanctuary workers that predation of endangered species eggs stopped overnight as crows, which are well regarded as one of the smartest birds on earth, quickly warned all their crow friends not to eat any eggs that look like that. Crows are amazingly smart. Yeah. Have you ever like read into the kind of crazy bullshit crows do? Um, they recognise people. They're one of the few animals that are able to recognise faces for some reason. And they hold grudges. There is an experiment where a researcher was just a dick to crows just to see what happened for I think like a year. They just dive bombed him. You can find a video of this as he's walking along. And what he did is when he wore the mask, um, uh, the crow still attacked him. But what happened was when other people wore the same mask, they also got attacked as well. So what he tried doing is he tried putting a hat on and he still found him. What they started doing is attacking everyone who wore a hat. <laughs> <laughs> just they thought, if we can't find him, we'll just get everyone who wears a hat. <laughs> They are capable of memorizing complex um, uh, solu um, solutions to problems and remembering them for years. So you've probably seen the famous video of a crow making a hook out of a piece of wire and using it to fish food out of a test tube. Yeah. And then they can then teach this behavior to other crows. They've also been observed dropping seeds on roads. So cars run them over. which in itself is quite smart. But then the crows have also been observed waiting for red lights to go and pick the seeds back up. And they've been, and they've been observed following garbage men around so they can pick up the, uh, the scraps that they leave behind. And they've memorized like their entire route. 
There are also stories of um, uh, farms and things like that where they've got crows stopping there while they were going, like migrating. Um, there's a famous story of a farmer and he said, you know what, this year I'm just going to shoot them. He shot exactly one crow and the entire flock of millions never set foot on his farm again. And in fact, started flying specific, they started flying higher over his farm. And when they worked out how high they were flying, they worked out it's the exact range that his shotgun couldn't reach. You can find all these stories and you can put the little fact bar you do below to confirm them and tell people other crazy bullshit crows have done. It's, it's, they're so smart and so terrifying. It's one of the animals people say could probably take over the world if they really wanted to. Because not only are they capable of holding grudges, but they're also capable of sharing that grudge with their friends. And there's something quite terrifying and unsettling about the idea that if you piss off one crow, you could potentially earn the ire of millions of crows. All of crow kind. So do you know what that's going to be? I can just that's going to be like that scene in The Simpsons where Hans Molman's in the bird sanctuary and they're all just flying into them. He's like, I need the biggest seed bell you have. I need the biggest seed bell you have. No, that's too big. No, that's too big. That's what it'd be like. Only they'd get you. You'd be like the birds. Or Birdemic. I'll see the don't even mention Birdemic. Birdemic too. <laughs> Those films are not without precedent. Birds are terrifying. They're capable of doing this. They can hold grudges and follow people. I think there's other reasons Birdemic is terrifying. Oh yeah. <laughs> You say, oh, it's a dumb bird. So I'll actually know him and 5,000 of his friends hate you. That's <laughs> scary. Like, I could take out one crow one on one, I'd have that crow. That crow would have no chance. Quick elbow drop, swift boot, done. 20 crows. Okay, now he's starting to get me there. They could peck at me, they could like do some damage, but I'd still take them out, flay all my arms around, pick up like a net or something like that. 100 crows. Now I'm starting to get worried because that's enough crows to envelop you. And that's when things get bad. A thousand crows. That's more than I probably weigh. So if they just sat on me, I'm down. <laughs> you get like a million crows, the game over. <laughs> game over, they've got that scene from Pitch Black. If you've ever seen that shitty Vin Diesel movie, where the millions of bird creatures fly out when it goes dark and just instantly turn that guy into a skeleton. It's like, yeah, no. Don't fuck with crows, man. Don't do it. Not worth it. As an extra fact to make you just that little bit more scared of the crow family, in 1995, researchers tried replicating this experiment with ravens, known as the big dick daddy of the crow family, and it didn't exactly go to plan. So why didn't it go well? Well, do you know what the ravens did? They didn't learn to avoid the eggs. They just took them and didn't eat them. So they were removing them from the environment to protect other ravens. <laughs> and you know what? That's fucking terrifying. So you just told us all these horror stories about these crows, and you're basically saying the same thing could happen, but with a bird that's like three times yeah. the size. Have you ever seen Japanese ravens? <laughs> Those things are fucking beast. They're like four times the size of a regular raven, man. They could take you out. So are we doing like, comment, subscribe anymore? No. Oh, okay then. We still try to promote the channel. Yeah. I guess we need it to grow. Okay then, yeah, guys. So like, comment, subscribe, all that bullshit. If you really want to help us grow this channel, take the link to this video and text it to your ex-girlfriend. <laughs> How many people are actually going to do that? I'm curious. So put in the comments the replies. What the, <laughs> what the fuck is this? I told you not to message me anymore. Yeah, do that. Why not? Let's see how it goes. Fuck it. So I think we can agree that crows are pretty terrifying. And if they wanted to, they could probably take over the world. Right? So let's imagine for a second that all of bird kind tries to attack humanity and they form a giant army. And we're gonna say that crows and ravens, they're at the top, they're in charge, they're the big Mac daddies giving the orders. What other roles do you think other birds could fulfill? Because I'm saying emus, ostriches, a definite shoe in for the enforcers. <laughs> They'd be the big enforcers like keeping everyone in line. Well, they're the ground soldiers, aren't they? Yeah, they people keep people off. Like, yeah. Do you know there's an actual thing called the emu war? And it says on it, decisive emu victory. <laughs> em there's already precedent for emus winning, right? So emus, ostriches, enforcers. Hummingbirds, 
definitely the stealth bombers. <laughs> so imagine if you're sat down, eating, uh, having a cup of tea, eating a biscuit, hummingbird comes in, puts its little beak in your ear or your eye, bam, hummingbirds, game over, done. I think woodpeckers will be the ones who like transmit messages. Morse code woodpeckers. <laughs> Morse code woodpeckers. So we've got that. I reckon when they finally get like television or something like that established, the eagle will be the spokesperson. It's got to be, I mean, the it's the most, fam eagle, the most yeah. famous bird. And I think we'd have like, uh, what is it, vultures, the ones that can fly super high and have really good eyesight, stuck below. They'd be the scouts. Mm. They'd be like the predator drones, you know, like keeping checks and everything. And then we'd have like the parrots and the other, like the macaws and stuff. They'd be the ones who send like the propaganda. They could learn how to speak our language and tell us that we're going to lose. Bird kind will reign supreme, just echoing from the forests. Do you reckon right at the bottom, kiwis? <laughs> They're just there. They're the mascot. The kiwis are the mascot. <laughs> then you got the chickens. Like the chickens aren't strong, but they are many, <laughs> and they could disrupt the food supply by just all shitting themselves to death. <laughs> so that's what they're gonna do. Like the chickens, weak but many, and disrupting the food supply. That's their job. They're like the, pe just, they're like the peasants. In yeah, just not, not laying any eggs. Just they're the ground. They're the, just the fodder that they throw into battle <laughs> to keep us going. <laughs> The hawks and uh, the kestrels and the falcons. Like fighter planes. They're like, yeah, they're their jet fighters. They're their main, like, you know, thrust of their air force. Because they're so fast. What are the ones that can dive bomb super fast? Peregrines? I think, oh, peregrine falcons, they go, what, 200 miles an hour? They're just the suicides. They're like the suicide kamikaze pilots. Because imagine if a, two, a bird grid 200 miles an hour hit you on the back of the head. Just... Imagine the president giving a speech and then a bird just dive bombs him with 200 miles an hour. Straight through his that, head. That'd take him out. That's it. That's, the, that's, that's it. That, you want to destabilise a country if you're the birds and they're watching this, because they probably are. Yeah. Someone's got a budgie in a cage behind them. That's how you take out, that's how you take out world leaders when they're out giving a speech. Imagine how demoralised humanity would be. They're giving that speech from Independence Day, like we will not go quietly into the night. And then just a peregrine falcon goes at Mach 3 through the back of his head. <laughs> that's it, that's demoralising as fuck. It'd be like one of those scenes in the film where he's making his speech, but then it's cut off because they see something in the crowd. And as it parts, a peacock comes through <laughs> with its one. feathers up, and it's like, oh, that's the distraction. the distraction. And what he doesn't realise is there's actually an army of hummingbirds like sneaking up behind him. Penguins. They're the, well, obviously, they're the only thing they've really got to patrol the oceans. So the penguins can patrol the oceans. <laughs> they're the navy. <laughs> they're the, the penguins are the navy. The penguins are the navy. The emus and ostriches are the army. And everything else is obviously the air force. I'm going to say I think birds will have the most comprehensive air and <laughs> most expansive globe-spanning air force humanity has ever seen. And you know what? We already know they can take out our planes. So they can just fly into the engines. Just think as well, um, if they try to nuke the birds, they, all they need to do is... Like, migrate to another fucking country! How do you take out a creature? That's like, oh, we've, we've, we've bombed their homeland. Oh, wait, what's that? What we've done is we've decided we're going to move to a place the birds can't go, Antarctica. And the penguins come. There's probably someone in the comments now taking it too seriously going, oh, we'll just get a fucking tank. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, you probably could get a tank, but what I'm saying is, you'd be safe in there, but for how long? How many bullets have you got before you run out? The birds are many. I've, I've, got, I've got a thousand bullets stocked up, really. How many birds do you think there are? How many birds have you seen today? Unless you're killing two birds with one bullet, then. It's ridiculous. You're never going to do it. There's someone in the comments, oh, I like, that's stupid. Tanks are taking out. It's like, for one, how are you going to take out a fucking swarm of birds with a tank it's not safe in there when you run out of food you've got to get out and then a million birds are going to like start pecking you we have to make peace with the birds and just imagine the peace tree so what do you want seeds <laughs> what seeds all the seeds we need the seeds seeds twigs M many twigs can we keep some no no twigs for you 